where she does what she always has done. Quite simply, Lena doesn't let Parkinson's disease define who she is. I have a condition and I have to be careful, but I consider myself normal and healthy and I don't want to consider myself sick. I hate to see people get into that kind of uh, identification where everything about them is Parkinson's disease. It's really shocking when you get that diagnosis, but once they start to see that their life's not, you know, falling apart, that they can manage, that their family, you know, can manage, uh, they start to have a much better attitude, and positive mental attitude is really important. In her work with Parkinson's families, Holly Robinson Pete has learned that it's also important to have a candid conversation with your doctor about the future. You have to sit down and go, okay, where do I want to be in five years from now? What is my treatment going to be like? And even when it comes to exercise and eating right, taking care of your body, um, you know, budget, you have to plan ahead. When someone in your family has Parkinson's disease, it's going to affect your life too. Recently, Klaus has taken on some household duties that Lena used to handle. He has stepped up and he is a pretty good cook now and he can even load the dishwasher. <laughs> Having the information you need can help you be a good partner. Ken's wife, Anne, started learning as much as she could about the illness as soon as he was diagnosed. I spent hours and hours and hours online researching everything there was to know about Parkinson's because we were both young and really didn't know anybody that had ever had it other than media personalities and I realized it wasn't something that either one of us should be afraid of and that we could you know tackle it together we were gonna make this into a good part of our life and and that's what we've done Ann and Ken are building a community of people actively involved in supporting research and other families I talk to care partners as well and let them know it's not anything to be afraid of that, you know, you, you, can, you can do it together. Ken also finds support from other people with Parkinson's online. I talk regularly with a gentleman in South Africa. I talk regularly with a gentleman in England. At any point of the day, I can jump online and someone that I know somewhere in the world who's in a similar situation, I can just chat with. You can make connections in person as well, at support groups like this one, at the center where Dr. Shannon practices. It can be a special place to share problems and solutions. You can't go to a dinner party with your friends and complain about your constipation and your sleepless nights, but you can go to a support group and complain about your constipation and sleepless nights, and everyone wants to hear about it. So it gives them a lot of information and information is power when you have a chronic disease. A caregiver can also take advantage of going to a support group because they can learn from other caregivers who go about what to do, particularly when the Parkinson's disease gets bad. As the disease develops, spouses and other family members often need to help their loved one with everyday tasks, like opening jars or fastening buttons. It's very important for them to understand what's disease, what the patient can change, and what they can't. Certain features of the disease, there's not much a patient can do about. Uh, and so pushing them to behave differently is just going to lead to conflict. It can be a lot to handle. Caregivers must take care of their own needs as well. I see so many selfless spouses and adult children of patients who are afraid to leave their, their patient alone and go out and get their hair done, for example or um, ignoring their own health because they spend all their time taking care of someone. So it's really important for them to take care of themselves, to get good medical care. It's sometimes more stressful for the caregiver than it is for the person with Parkinson's themselves. So my advice is just to, to be patient and inside is still that same person that you married or have lived with or cared for for all these years as a normal healthy person they just need a little extra help in addition to providing physical help caregivers can also watch for signs of mental health problems that the doctor should be aware of from sleep disturbances to confusion memory problems and depression it is something that magnifies symptoms so any patient that's depressed minor symptoms become huge the good news about the depression and Parkinson's disease is that it's usually very treatable. As Holly Robinson Pete learned, it can be challenging to get someone who is depressed to get help. 
He was pretty stubborn, my dad, and again, I think he was a little fearful, obviously, because we just didn't have a lot of information um, in the mid-80s about what this disease was. Um, so support was a little rare during those days. But as time moved on and his disease progressed, um, I was able to access better information, and I was able to find an amazing neurologist who really helped me and was very was always there for me took my calls whenever I, whenever I called him and he was able to give me some insight about managing the medication that's an important point finding a healthcare team that you feel comfortable with can make a big difference for the person with parkinson's disease and for loved ones for holly it meant her father was able to be with her on her wedding day he passed away when he was in his 60s and he was still quite young, but he lived a pretty decent quality of life for almost two decades with Parkinson's disease. Um, I do believe that had he been diagnosed today, his quality of life would have been a lot better. I get a little bit sad that my dad didn't have the opportunity that so many other patients have today. Through her work on behalf of people with Parkinson's disease, Holly has learned that people diagnosed today can expect to be able to control symptoms for many years. New treatments are being discovered as scientists learn more about this complicated disease. So if you or a loved one is diagnosed with Parkinson's disease, you can still plan ahead for the future. Build a healthcare team that can guide your treatment for the long term and learn what you need to know and do to be as active as possible. With careful management, uh, not over-treating, uh, I think we can uh, offer many patients a fairly normal life, uh, close to a normal lifespan. That's what I tell my patients. Uh, the key is early treatment, uh, treating patients properly early to avoid problems down the road. You don't suffer from Parkinson's, you live with Parkinson's and that's what you, you have to have that, that outlook that this is just something that's now part of your life and you have to live with it and deal with it as, as it comes along. I take one day at a time and I stay positive and I still think that within my lifetime uh, some things will appear on, on, so that can help me. You can have access to great treatments, great therapies. You have some great opportunities to learn how to really manage this disease well. Thank you.